Hey there, so welcome back to the vlog. Today, I want to start part one of a series of vlogs. I'm not gonna do them all back to back because that would just really get boring, but I want to do a serialized version of building an application and we're gonna build it first on iPhone, then we'll go build it on Android, then we'll go build it on Windows, then Mac, and you know, do it in several different languages using different systems. And the reason that I wanted to do this was just to give people an idea of what happens when an app is built. Now, I'm not gonna do this as a programming course, and I'm not going to dig down deep into how the various systems work, but I just wanna give you like a, a sort of 10,000 foot high view of this is basically what happens. The app that I'm going to build will be the same app on each system, and the way that this app basically works is, you know, you have a text box where you enter some text, you have a button that you press, and then there'll be a label underneath, uh, which then basically outputs what you type. So it's like just basically proving that we've read from one place, we've done something with it, and then we push it out somewhere else. And you know, also by keeping it that simple also means that I can keep the videos pretty short because obviously if we're building a really complicated user interface or doing something very, very complicated in the software, that would just get boring very, very quickly if you're not into this type of stuff. So I'm trying to do this from a, you know, as I said, like 10,000 foot high view, keep it not just for the programmers and the technical people, but also the non-technical people, just, you know, as something that they can look at and go, oh, okay, you know, now I see how this works. And, you know, just basically take it from there. Um, the original idea of this was, as I said, to do a serialized part, maybe sort of eight or 10 of these. And, you know, if, however, something does pop up and you guys and girls like this type of thing. If you have any questions or feedback, then please put them down in the comments below and you know, maybe we can take this somewhere else. I have no idea really where this is gonna go. This is very much an experiment. I wanna stay with the technical side because you know, that's what I do. I mean, you know, my daytime job, I'm you know, a CTO. I also do you know, uh, consulting gigs um, as a mobile developer. My background, I mean, you know, I'm wearing an iHeartRadio uh, t-shirt right now because I used to be the programmer for iHeartRadio. I, I just want to try it and see where this goes. So anyway, let's dive into the code. So we program on iPhone using something called Xcode. So I'm just going to create a new project here. It's going to be a, just a single screen, nothing fancy. I'm going to call it test app. And desktop is where we're going to put it. Okay. So what we've got, oh, don't need that either. Okay, so what we've got is a storyboard and this is the user interface. This arrow here basically means this is where we start on the user interface and then you'd have other screens that would be hooked up to this, almost like a flowchart. And the bit that hooks them together is called a segue. So we have some code on the uh, back here called the app delegate. And this is basically where the methods work for the app as a whole. So let's say for instance you were a game and something happened like the phone rang, then you would put the game save code in this part because it's for the whole app, it's not for any particular screen. And then we've got these two files called the view controller. And basically these are where the code goes for this screen here. Now just to uh, really drill this bit home, I'm actually gonna delete this because that's a really bad name to call it. So move to trash. So assuming I've got my screen here and this screen is, let's just say it's you know our test screen. So I'm gonna create a quick file. It's a Cocoa Touch class and we're gonna call it the test view controller because that's what we want our screen to be called. And I'm just gonna save it. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll go back to the storyboard and if I click this little button at the top here, I can then say that this screen is actually a test view controller. So what that's now done is it said everything that goes on in this screen is gonna run the code that is inside here. So what we're now gonna do is build the user interface there are a lot of controls already pre-built, and so what we're gonna do is use these. I'm not gonna build custom controls, so we're gonna take a text field, 
we're going to take a button and I'm going to have a label. I'm not going to get into how to do sizing and rotation and stuff like that. All I'm going to quickly do is, you know, just sort of make these a little bit bigger. Um, I'm going to say press me. And this label, I'll make it bigger so we can put some text in it. And then I'm just going to blank this out. I'll, I'll make it centered and blank out the text so that there's nothing in it. Now, when we bind these to the code, we can either say that we're binding an action, which is something that happens as a result of, for instance, a tap or a swipe or something like that, or we can bind what's called an outlet. And that basically means that, you know, that our code affects something on the screen here. So if I go into the header file, and the way this works is you have a header file where you declare the things that you're going to use, and then you have the implementation file, which has the .m extension instead of .h, and this is where the actual code for that thing goes. So you, you, you know, basically declare your roll call of these are the functions and methods and properties that we're going to use, and then in here is the actual code that implements them. So I'm going to quickly create three properties. Oops. So, the, you'll notice that Objective-C has some very, very strange syntax. I'm not going to get into that syntax right now, but uh, so what we basically want is a non-atomic strong IB outlet, and it is of type UI, oops, it is a UI text field, and we're going to call it TXT input. Then we've got our button, and our button is also an outlet. So at property, non-atomic, strong, IB outlet, UI button. And we'll call it button press me. You know what, I've forgotten my uh, semicolons here. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is the property strong and this one is our outlet it is a UI label and we will call this LBL output Ooh, can't spell right the last thing that we want is a method so that when we press the button it does something so we are now going to declare IB action uh, button pressed and we don't need that right so what I'm now going to do is copy that to here and stick some things there and I'm also just going to add something I'm not going to explain what this is but basically the things that we just created on the other side so we had txt input we had lbl output and we had a button called press me right okay so what we're now going to do is we're going to wire this up back to the storyboard and this is one of those really archaic things that we had from a long, long time ago that Apple did. But you basically have to press the control key and then drag from here to, for instance, the text box. When I let go, it then says, right, here's the outlets that you've created. And it's already, because we'd said that there was an outlet that was a text view, it's going like, this is probably what you want. So yeah, I'm just gonna click that. And what you'll now see over here is it says, Every time I'm talking about TXT input, it's going to this text input uh, view. Now, I'm going to do the same again, but this time go to the button. And yep, it's suggesting that this is probably button press me. So I click that and you'll notice now that it's wired up over here. Now, there's still this LBL output is not going anywhere. So we're going to finally try and find that. And of course, now I've made it invisible. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the output. So at this point, we're pretty much done with the user interface. We have a text field. Oh, actually, we're not quite done yet. We have a text field, which is bound to the text uh, property. We have the button, which is bound to the, the 
button property and we have our label down here. But the other thing is we need to say when this button is pressed, it needs to run a particular method over here. So do you remember we created this IB action? This is gonna come into play now. What we now do is we hit control and we have to drag up the other way. <laughs> so now it's going like, well, okay, what is gonna happen? You know, is this gonna like show a screen or, or do, do some segue stuff? Or is it gonna call this event? And this is the button pressed event that we created in our code. So I'm gonna say, this is what it's running. And what you'll now notice is that the touch up inside event because you can, you know, uh, touch up outside or inside, or you can swipe or, you know, do all sorts of things. Um, you know, when we touch up inside this button, it's now going to go and run in the test view controller, the button pressed code. Now, the final thing that we're going to do is actually write the code. So the first thing we have to do is look at what is inside the text box. So we're gonna create a string and just basically grab that. So we're gonna go ns string my text equals, and it's going to be self.txt input.text. So whatever the text is, whatever this, whatever the text is inside the text box called txt input, which is in this view controller, not another view controller or another, you know, whatever, um, you know, it's, it's in this one, whatever that is, go put it in a variable, which is basically like a shoebox. Imagine a shoebox where you just throw stuff in. So, so we've got a string shoebox, it's called my text, and we're going to put whatever's in that text box in there. Now we're going to take that text and we're going to set the label to that text. So now we can say self dot lbl output dot text equals my text. Now I know that the purists, oops, I know that the purists are going to be like, well, hang on a minute, you could have just done this as one line, but yeah, you know, I'm 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 just doing this, I'm just doing it this way because, okay? So now the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run this. So I'm going to select this because I believe that is the simulator that I already have running. I already pre-booted the simulator because this can take forever to start. So now I'm just gonna hit run. Uh, okay, enable developer mode on this Mac. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay, come on. If you're wondering what that was all about, um, I recently formatted this Mac and Apple was just like, uh, you, you really wanna do development on this Mac? It's like, yes I do. Okay, so it says it's built. So now let's just come over here. We can see at the top it's saying that it's launching it, but really what it's doing is it's copying it over to the simulator. Okay, so here's our icon. It's now about to install. Here we go. So, okay, I'm gonna just type here, test, press me, and you can see now it's taken the value that was up here, run the code, and it's put out the value that we type there. If I change this to testing, press me, it changes. So as you can see, it works. So that is the basics of how an iPhone application is put together. So there you go. Hopefully that made some sense to you. So yeah, if you have any comments, criticisms, feedback, put them down in the comments below and I'll, I'll see if I can answer them as best as I can. Um, if you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. If you want to see more, please hit subscribe and speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye.